But does all of this mean we're becoming a nation of snitches, sneaks and quasi-Stasi? Well, former Tory Minister Anne Widdicombe says so in her Daily Express column today. She joins me now. And talk of the army being deployed on our streets to ensure the coronavirus rules are followed. Is this madness? Uh, it is, um, and and it's not acceptable. Uh, of course, the army has a role to play. It built the Nightingale Hospitals, after all, did a tremendous job on that. I'd be quite happy to see army logistics employed in trying to sort out space. But what we cannot have, and absolutely cannot have, uh, is the army... Uh, maintaining law. Um, that uh, is not acceptable. It wouldn't be martial law, as I pointed out earlier today. Martial law is when the army controls the country, which is a different thing. But um, the army has no role uh, in civil policing. That is down to our police force. And how are we here? How are we here? I mean, six months ago today, Boris Johnson first locked down the country and we were told that this was going to be three weeks. Six months later, we're being told there's another six months of this to go. Yet the public are all supportive of it. I mean, how are we here? Well, it's a very... Oh. It's going to be a second wave. Um, uh, you know, there's, there's, there's nothing surprising about that. So if we knew there was going to be a second wave... I can't see why um, we didn't decide right at the beginning what it was we were going to do rather than stop start measures. I mean, one moment Boris is telling us, telling us to go back to work. The next moment he's saying, no, actually, work from home. It's stop start, which is very damaging to the economy. And then you say another lockdown will tip the country into a black hole economically. A lockdown, yes, yes. Yes, I do think that. I think that if the entire country is locked down again, as we were in March, um, uh, then uh, that would just be the death knell for the economy because it's already suffered hugely. You can't tell people they must not work and then refuse to support them. Uh, so it would cost a, a vast amount. Uh, and for what? Nine out of ten of those who died already had underlying health problems. Four out of five, so the scientists tell us, uh, people who get coronavirus either won't even know they've got it or will only have quite mild flu-like symptoms. Uh, now, you know, is that really worth wrecking the economy, uh, causing a, an increasing number of deaths from other uh, sources, such as untreated cancer, uh, suicide? Um, the, the impact on mental health is huge. Uh, what are we thinking of? And the thing that's so frustrating, Anne, and again, you point this out in your column, but there is another way and it's worked for Sweden. And in fact, a lot of eminent scientists, including Carl Hennigan and lots of other respected scientists, too, actually say that's the right approach. That's what we should be looking for, because what they've done in Sweden is encourage a voluntary approach, a responsible approach. But it's all focused on protecting those most vulnerable. Yes, and, and, and that is just plain common sense. We know that the vulnerable are the ones at risk. Um, the, the, you know, the rest of us who are fit and healthy uh, should actually be told that our duty is to get on with the economy and with the volunteer effort. And, of course, people always imagine, well, uh, Sweden did nothing. No, Sweden did an awful lot, but what it didn't do was lock down. You also, Anne, believe that there should be this system where everyone over 50 gets given a personal risk score well, so that folk would be able to make their own decisions about how vulnerable to COVID-19 they really are? Well, that's not my idea. That was the government. Um, it was one of the ideas trailed by the government. And as I say, that's fine, because all that does is try and identify which people would be very badly affected by the virus if they got it. So that is a perfectly reasonable approach. The approach that I was dreading, and I am grateful didn't happen, uh, was another lockdown. But uh, the fact is that once you start telling people to stay at home, uh, you're destroying public transport, you're destroying little business like sandwich bars, you're destroying anything that depends on people going to work. Well, in our great British pubs as well, Anne, which make most of their money after 10 o'clock at night. Well, I mean, the government quotes Antwerp and says it can be done because apparently in Antwerp there, there was such a curfew. I don't know this. This is what they say. Uh, there was such a curfew uh, and it worked. But 
I can't see it, quite honestly. I cannot see why uh, the virus is any uh, less dangerous. Um, at 9.59 than it is at one minute past 10. But I've spoken to a lot of nightclub owners, Anne, who say actually what the issue is going to be is you're going to have a whole load of drunk young people pouring out onto the streets. They're able to go into off-licences where they can buy bottle of bottles of wine. They're able to go onto the tube all at the same time. So in fact, it could have the opposite effect. You could end up seeing a 10pm curfew, curfew increasing the spread. Oh, I, I think in some circumstances it could. Um, equally, you know, as I say, a uh, government is claiming that it has worked elsewhere. Um, but what all this smacks of is, I mean, you know, we've been told for months, absolutely months now, that it, it, uh, it is not necessary for shop workers to wear masks. Quite suddenly, overnight, um, it's essential if we're all not to get the COVID. This smacks to me, of a government that now is giving in to that malaise, which eventually affects all politicians, which is it must be seen to be doing something uh, rather than actually getting to grips with the problem. It must be seen to be doing something. So we've got a whole new raft of, of regulations introduced. I don't believe any of them are going to amount to much. No, I don't either. And that's the thing, Anne. It would be much easier to support... If you could see, OK, this is tough, but it's going to make a difference. Whereas actually, all of these measures are going to ruin businesses, ruin social lives, take a lot of joy out of folks' existences, but not actually fundamentally defeat the virus. Well, that's the point. You can't defeat the virus unless uh, and until we have a vaccine. The virus is with us. So the question we have to ask is, how do we live with this thing? Mm. Um, and how do we, uh, the point is that if, uh, and, I mean, I'm not proposing to lock people down, but if there were to be a lockdown, if it were to be confined to those who are vulnerable, that would at least then enable the government to put in proper support packages uh, because it would be tailored. Um, and that I think you could do, whereas at the moment it, it's very, very much uh, a sort of scattergun effect.